is approval of the minutes. So mm -hmm. I would entertain them. The I thought we were right here. Mm -hmm. okay. Y'all look, look, please review and then let me know if you want to make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number one is approval of a minor public works contract with JNL Tree Service for tree removal at 1614 Alica Place. Uh, Selvin, good Thank afternoon. You, Mr. Chairman. This is a request for authorization uh, for a minor public works contract with JNL Tree Service uh, for removal of a tree on 1614 Alica Place. Your packet has two of the four solicited uh, quotes for uh, performance of this work. JNL was the most economical um, at $11,000. We are requesting uh, approval of that contract. Legal has reviewed and, and granted us the permission to have this doubled up to show up on council again tonight and right uh, just to expedite mm -hmm. the process. Right yeah, I, I, I know the truth. Yeah. We don't have anybody chained to it currently. Yeah. No, sir. <laughs> will it shut the will it shut the road down or require uh, I mean the tr tree's hollow it, it, yes. it's beautiful and big but hollow yeah. uh, what do you what are we going to have to do sidewalk yes. roads anything we are going to have to make Sewer some pipe. sidewalk repairs once the tree is removed and we will be able to keep one lane open while they are taking the tree down so we'll they'll flag okay because that is a that's a narrow it's a pretty narrow, narrow but they'll Kind of be off the road and on the sidewalk at the same time because we'll have to repair the sidewalk anyway okay all right I, I i don't have a problem with it or with it being doubled up Sorry. motion to approve it so second move and second all in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye motion carries item number two is approval to award a contract to price construction company for sokol park north phase one project Total is $1.497 million. Calvin, welcome. Good afternoon, Calvin. Good afternoon. Uh, May 24th, an open bid for the Soap Park North and through the project phase one. We had one bidder submit bid for this project, and that was a price construction company with $1,496,835.40. The scope of this phase of the project will be improving or widening the park entrance at North Watermelon Road and adding a turning lane and widening the park exit, adding a turning lane onto Watermelon Road, uh, repaving the access road going south for uh, in, into the park, repaving the model airplane um, parking lot and adding lighting there. So that's all in this phase. And despite this bid being over budget, we do have funding in place to award this bid. And that fund that money comes way via additional elevate money that was dedicated to Sobel Park paving project and the local streets construction project, that money being shifted over to Sobel North project. And OCE is recommending, I'm mean, requesting approval to award this contract to price level uh, <coughs> price construction company with a $1.4 million. Kevin, how much over are we and why do you think there was only one, one bidder? Well, there was one, well, the original budget to answer the first question the original budget for the project I mean, was yeah not not a not of the blue surprise but go ahead the original budget for the project was six hundred seventy two thousand dollars <laughs> oh um, wow again that's we we were able to we were able to award this project with additional of 1.1 coming from sober park south and the reason that money that money so high didn't left over was because that estimate was way over than what it actually cost to reduce Sokol Park South, so we can able we're able to shift that money over. Both both estimates were from Hera, and we mentioned that during the budget process. Yeah, I, I remember us talking about this specific mm -hmm. work needs to be done. But it balanced; it actually balanced out. So we overestimated it on South. One point one. Is that right? And and on North, we thought it was going to be six or seven hundred. And it's mm -hmm. one point four. Yeah, and I think with the original estimate for Sober Park North for this phase was six hundred and ninety-two thousand. Mm -hmm. And the reason it comes in roughly forty percent higher is because this the the subcontractors and Frank with TTM would be able to this. The subcontractors, their prices came in high due to the volume of work coming in. They're, they're, 
there's there's overload is really I think one of the things that was real interesting to me when I met with them in preparation for this meeting was it, it sounds like we, we're not only having a material, we know we've had a material price increase on so many things, we've also had a worker problem for so many companies, but we're in a time right now where most companies, local companies, people that we're working with do not have the ability to add a bunch of other work from commitments they've got right now. So I think that was that was one of the drivers in probably not getting more than one bid is no one has the capacity, which again is a problem we've got to continue to watch, in my opinion, very closely because we also talked about the true increase when he says 40%. I think we, dealing in Frank, I don't want to speak for you, you're over behind the corner, there you are, behind the corner over there, but, but they had estimated or they thought we would be somewhere between 900000 I would say, and a million dollars. So we're basically, we're roughly about $600,000 over on this one project, which is the 40% of, let's say, 900000 360000 I think I'm adding right. But it's about four hundred dollars to, to $500,000 over what they actually thought would happen. And it's, I mean, it's a concern, I mean, moving forward because it's hard to find qualified people to do the work. And then we had the discussion about if you if you reject the bid and you rebid it, are we gonna be any better off? And the feeling from TTL and really from staff was they didn't think we were gonna be any better off. We could be worse off. So it's a it's a difficult balancing act right now the in the economy. The so uh, they wanted to add additional lighting to the uh, parents. They and who? The, the city that I have, the staff that Bus? I have to add yeah. some additional yeah. lights. That, that makes sense. Because today there's only two lights that are on Alabama power poles and then there's two old lights. So that was about 220000 So if you add that, that's how you're getting to uh, what Council yeah. Pro was saying. Yeah. You're really looking at that nine, 900 to a million. But what we're seeing across the board, we even used increased unit prices in April staff said let's revisit the unit prices and we have did other projects with the MBA, with the private projects so we use those elevated unit costs and it still came in 40 percent higher right. than that uh, we did have eight plan holders uh, we personally called everybody in town and out of town and we had eight plan holders uh, up until about two days before the bid and ended up with one most of them called and apologized for not Bidding that just said we do not have the capacity to respond. So ended up with one bidder, and we were receiving questions from multiple contractors two days before the actual bidder. Mayor, how does this factor in to our our pledge towards Para? Did we did we pledge in kind? We'll you know y'all do this, you do this. We'll take care of these turn lanes and the expansion. Oh. With the county, the county is doing the replacement of the, the, lights, of right. the lights as part of the trade-off. Um, I think we have a total of all funds on this, about 1.6 million of the total 10 million that was allocated towards so forth. improvements. And there's another 500 that's also been spent as part of that for the mirror, not miracle for the all-inclusive part. But our pledge was we will we will implement this we'll take care of this work. It was not we'll come up with nine hundred and sixty thousand that can be used towards this work. No no sir. Our our handshake agreement with our friends at the county was they would take care of the lights at the southern ball field. We would take care of the intersect intersection work and lighting on this side on so the and, and it's I can tell you as a parent who is out there a lot and, and as a coach of flag football is out there a lot, it is really, really needed. Um, and the parking lots are also needed out there, but this will certainly help the safety out there well, a lot. Well, there's supposed to be, I guess in phase two, I guess the bad news is there's not any extra money to start phase two, but phase two, there's gonna be more work in the parking lot on the other side over there. Right now they park on the grass, right? That's right. where, where flat, that is. That's, and they can that's get right. to it, it's just on the grass. But, mm -hmm. But I think, Frank, help me, the, the, this project is more toward where that miracle, the field, that one side, right? And, and the 
part that's used for the flag football and some of that other stuff, that's going to have to be in a project next year. But that's another couple million dollars. Mr. Crow, I would like your help on something because, again, I'm, I'm coming to you as a constituent. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. wonderful. Um, <laughs> no, I'm serious because you have 440 homes here. Mm -hmm. You're going to have 600 plus homes here. I would imagine one fourth of the population uses this park in some form or fashion. To utilize this park, you have to go all the way Rice Mine Road and come into here. Mm -hmm. There's, Para is not providing any pedestrian or golf cart or bicycle access into there. And they have an access road here and you can go through the trails in the woods. To get to it. But I'd like to work with you because I think if there was something created, you, I, would, I would walk to the park. As a, I won't call you, Mr. Mr. Maddox. That's a great idea. Yeah, I want to work, work with You're you. You're supposed to say I voted for you. <laughs> I, I voted for you, Mr. Pro, and I expect, I expect you to get this done. Um, no, I think. And, and well, way, wasn't, I wasn't think, there a discussion about that years ago, though, Walt? I mean, was, about. And I don't think Pear is against it, by the way. Yeah. I just think they they would want partners and making it, it making it happen. open where you could, because there'd be a lot that would help a lot. Yeah, and it, it would help. People it would take a lot of roads. Or ride their bikes or golf carts. How cars, far right? is it? I mean, how far are you talking about? Oh, you're, Mr. Matt. You're talking about, you know, um, <laughs> you're, you're talking about a quarter mile um, to a half mile at the furthest. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have golf carts that are, quote, street legal, and a lot of people have bicycles. And, and you have a lot of people right now who will jump the fence. Mm -hmm. To go do it, but you could take also a lot more cars off the road if we could figure out how sure. to make that happen. So I'm coming to my council well, member with a, with a. You know that sounds like that's is his that, five minutes. Up. No, that no no no. He's got that's extra time. That sounds like another elevate project, Mr. Matt. That's right. That's right. It'll be one of the cheaper ones. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's right. Norm, are you okay with this? Oh, I'm I'm fine with it. Yeah, we we've got to do it. Second. Moved and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, Calvin. Item number three, approval of the ALDOT agreement for cooperative maintenance of the public right of way for River District Park, MLK, Jack Warner improvements, and other future projects. Welcome, Tyler. Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. So we have done significant improvements within ALDOT right of way lately, specifically Q uh, Thomas Bridge right of way underneath um, where Jack Warner Parkway is, where River District Park is, where we're going to build a pedestrian bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and any other future improvements, it's kind of in that general area underneath the bridge and the right of way. This agreement is essentially agreeing that we are responsible for maintenance for all of those improvements, which we know we are. That's always been the plan. It's just putting it in writing. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Any questions? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number four. Authorization for the mayor to execute contracts with Lamar Companies Sinclair, Sinclair sorry, Broadcast Group for advertising for police and fire recruitment campaigns. Dr. Rush. Yes, sir. So good this afternoon. Is, um, we have two contracts that are going to be um, coming up to you guys in council hopefully next week. Um, one for Lamar for some billboards, and then one for Sinclair for some TV ad spots and then some OTT ads. So that's also if for um, all of those people that uh, stream did, uh, digitally. Yes, sir. So the Lamar ad is going to be twenty thousand dollars. The um, Sinclair ad by is twenty five thousand dollars, and it's already budgeted. And the the um, hundred thousand dollars um, for the public safety campaign. Richard, talk a little bit about the process of how we got here, as far as selection and all that. Sure. How, how did that work? So, um, Kevin on my team um, does a lot of the media buying, and so he went through last year. Last year's. Um, recruitment and retention campaign was extremely successful. And so um, he looked through it. He said, okay, it's time to ramp it up again. This is what we're doing. Um, we need billboards all over our community. Um, Sinclair does a great job. And if, if you work with them on multiple things at one time, you can kind of bundle the deal. And so they've got the uh, large reach as far as TV channels go. And they also can handle a lot of the um, OTT buys that we don't do in house. So. We do a lot of the digital media buys our, um, in house ourselves, but um, through Sinclair, we were able to bundle that and take care of the actual TV commercials and then streaming commercials. Yeah. So, so I have a, a question about 
the effectiveness of the, the campaign. Sure. Because yes, was it a year or two ago, I think we, we put out a hundred grand. That's right. For, yes, sir. for a year. And I think our status on the headcount shortage is to, I don't think the needle has moved. I think it, we move, we improve some, right. but we're back. Is that correct? That so, is back. Yes, sir. So, talk me through how this impacts that. Okay. So, um, we have 100,000. Um, there's a media blitz. Um, we got the numbers up to where they were fully staffed. And then we um, let them put off the gas and said, okay, so we're here. Let's see what we're doing. Let's reevaluate. And now the numbers have started dropping back down, so we're about to ramp it back up. And I could feed off Dr. Russ uh, for a second. When we did a campaign, you can look at our recruiting numbers, and they did skyrocket. We got within, I think, two to be fully staffed. Right, I remember uh, that. Times have kind of changed. Uh, being a police officer right here is popular. Uh, so it's that, that time where we're losing people every day. We lost one to decide he's not going to be a police officer. Uh, we've lost three this week. Um, so we need that campaign, especially a Facebook flood and some other social media with the younger generation to get those numbers to get people to say, hey, look, especially advertise our new pay scales or else say, hey, you can make this money doing this job. Um, but we do, when they do do these, you see a spike in our applicants. Okay. That's, yes, sir. Yes, sir. that's what I'm, we do have evidence. Yes, sir. That 100 grand of advertising moves the needle. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And especially when you're splitting 100 grand over fire and police. So, yes, sir. So. Um, that's a definite. Okay. Um, Dr. Rush, I know that in, in the school system, they TCTA has a uh, class, I think, with the firefighters. Um, are we actively kind of trying to recruit in that area? You know, and I think Kevin might be able to be better to this than, than I could, but Kevin has actually been working with, so the police department, um, one of their officers is now a full-time recruiter, and during the COVID, when COVID was hot and heavy, they weren't actually able to get into schools and go visit, and so now we're actually about to ramp up that also, yes sir, so okay. they're going to be making more school visits and that kind of thing. Okay. Yes sir. And we are working hand in hand with TCTA still yes, sir. on uh, that program. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice it's program. Been going real well. We've recruited yeah. uh, four yeah. uh, current firefighters out of the program. Yes, sir. And we I think it's a great career, program. I think three or four other uh, scholarships for other kids. Awesome. Okay. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? Yeah, uh, I, have, I, yeah. I do. Sorry. Love yep. Richard, I'm not questioning any of this at all. Sure. And I, I love it. Fact. Okay. But several of us have heard some from other media groups. Okay. And um, so can you tell me why Sinclair was chosen? Um, How did y'all, did you do the, their numbers or ratings or, sure, of course. Um, or, you know, Hey. So over the past year, year and a half, we've met with several different groups throughout. Um, I'm talking about Town Square. We know Town Square Media. We've met with WBUA. We've met with other agencies that do some of these ad, uh, ad buys themselves. Um, we looked at the numbers and with the commercial buys and the bundle that we were able to get, nobody else was really able to, to match what we okay. were trying to do. And so when we add in the commercial television buys on top of the deals that could give us the OTT buys, it just makes sense. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, I had to ask. Yeah, sure, sure, of course. And, yes, and, I, and I, no, you know, I know, I know when a lot about media buys, of course, and you get, you got to look at numbers and things like that. It's probably the most important things because you sure want to reach the right people. The people. That's right, right people. And yes, when you sir. have a hundred thousand dollars going across both police and fire, it sounds like a lot until you're actually spending it. Oh, I, and you know that. And I do so know that. Watch it very closely. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank yes, you, sir. All right. Thank you. Well, also, I think some some. Representatives from Town Square? Is yeah, Terry's here. No, he's from her. Did Terry, do you want to say anything? Yes, sir, I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Mayor, Council, how you doing? Good. Good. Uh, I'm Terry Banks with Town Square Media. And uh, I just want to, uh, I first learned about the the uh, presentation for the buy this morning. And uh, it's great to know that uh, we believe in advertising, that we know advertising works. Uh, I think recruiting is very important for our, our first responders. I also would like to say that Town Square Media 
is uh, one of the strongest radio groups in the state. We have we have eight radio stations here locally. We have three urban stations, one being 92.9 WTUG, which is the strongest uh, urban station in the state with 100,000 watts, um, and about 30 or 40,000 weekly, uh, weekly listeners. And then we have WFFN, which is our country station. Everybody knows Stephen DC. And then we have uh, 105.1 The Block, which is um, uh, this charges adults 1834, and I think would be a great target for uh, firefighters and police officers. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, we have a sports talk station. Having said all that, we would like the opportunity to uh, to make a, a pitch to receive some of some of the dollars. I think uh, if you combine our eight station plus our digital products, we reach 100,000 listeners on a daily basis. And then not only that. In Tuscaloosa, and I can't say anything else about the rest of the state, and some may know this, but in Tuscaloosa, we're, we're the only group that's, uh, that's contributing and feeding first responders, firefighters, and police officers monthly on our dime. So uh, I know the gentleman said he spoke, he spoke with someone from Town Square. I don't know who that would be, but we would like the opportunity to come in and make a stronger pitch to be a part of uh, this upcoming night. Uh, we do have some money allocated in our plan for the safety campaign for radio buys that we plan to spend with Town Square Media, but just most of the digital ad buys that we're talking to Town Square about uh, before, we're handling in-house ourselves just because we have that capability to handle in-house. Uh, the only aspect of this that we really, we're looking at are the commercial television buys and then the OTT buys, which we just felt were stronger because they were able to bundle those two together. But as far as we do have some radio that we do plan to allocate. Y'all could sit down and talk to them. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Sir. I'll sure. make a presentation to you about that. Remind us, dude, Sinclair, that's 3340. Is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank you, Terry. And we've got a motion and a second, I believe, on the table. Yes, sir. Right? Yep. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number five is, is an update. Uh, Councilman Wilson and, and I and, and uh, Councilman Busby would like an update on where Martin Luther King Jr. Jack Warner Parkway project is, Brian. So if you let us, yes, sir, appreciate it. All right. So the MLK Jack Warner project is composed of three phases. Phase one and two are currently under construction. You see the yellow here is phase one. Phase two from Greensboro to 21st is phase two. Phase one has two sections from Greensboro to Nix Kids Avenue. The Jack Warner section from the amphitheater and then from Stillman Boulevard to 4th Street on the north side. And phase three fills in the gap. <clears throat> uh, phase one uh, started construction 11 29 20. It was a $10.8 million contract with GFC Construction. Um, the construction is 22 months by the contract, so it's projected to end this September. The currently the Jack Warner section in front of the amphitheater is complete. I believe we're doing a landscape walkthrough here in the next couple of weeks. Um, the MLK section um, has been bogged down with uh, the conversion of the overhead utilities to underground. The section from 7th Street right here in this curve to Stillman that works complete and they poured curve last week so that roadway work will begin to ramp up we, we're expecting to lay binder and it'll begin to look more complete here in the next several weeks mm -hmm. the, the part north of seventh still has uh utility work remaining and that work will be ongoing you know until the contract completion date you, you know brian um I guess up until last week, the, the project, or the, let's say two weeks ago, the project appeared uh, abandoned. I've been getting several calls from several people um, about the project because of the fact that they wanted to know how long the project was supposed to be going on, how many working days, 
the project was supposed to be is supposed to be, and would there be liquidate liquidated damages if those days are not um, adhered to? And so, can you can you talk to that for me? Sure. So the original contract was for I'm going to say approximately 18 months. It was supposed to end in mid May, and then the last summer the decision was made to convert the utility that ready utilities on the ground. So that we did a change order earlier this year. So that added 110 days to the contract. So that's the, the, the length of the contract in terms of LVs. Um, we're tracking right now, we're tracking basically our time and money are tracking, like we've completed the amount of work we're supposed to at this point mm -hmm. with a little bit of lag. We expect that'll catch up as we spend a lot of money putting asphalt down and work on the roadway. So we feel like we're tracking at the point the contract date ends, if there's things that uh, if the contractor's going over and the items are out of their control, then that's the point we'd consider looking at LDs. And right where that dollar general is, right after you pass that traffic light. Um, right here? Yes, sir. Around in that area, I think there used to be a car dealership there. It looks really bad. Um, and I have received so many calls and concerns about <coughs> is there anything that we can do to cut it, uh, to cut that grass, to, to make it look uh, presentable? Yes. Because I'm hearing that as, as, as it gets hotter, potential rodents, snakes, okay. that's, that's a good hangout for them. Yeah, that's and, been, sorry. Go ahead, no, go ahead. Yeah, that's been brought to our attention. Mm -hmm. We'll need to work through that with our contractor. Um, and here to get them to clean them up. I, I know that's city acquired property, so it's going to be dependent on. Brian, is that the, during construction, is that the responsibility of our right of way crews, or is that the responsibility <coughs> of the contractor? Our contractor is responsible for maintaining within the limits of their construction. So I don't believe that's, I believe this area is outside those limits. Yeah. Now, we have to work through this because I think at some point, our contractor use that for lay down area. Yeah, they were just throwing stuff so, there. Yeah. 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 So I think that would oh, maybe yeah. bring bring it into their responsibility. Um that's been pointed out to us and because I truly believe through, trying to get that cleaned up. Because Brian, I think I, I believe that when it, it's done, uh it's gonna look it's gonna be a beautiful place. Um but the people in, in the district they wanna see something being done. Yes sir. <laughs> I understand and I hope you know, again, this this roadway work happening. I think will ease people's feelings. Yeah, we, oh, I, I saw some people pole. this morning. They're working hard. Uh, <laughs> you see the curve there. You see the Dexter signal pole. I dig the so that utility work mm -hmm. completing. Um, like I said, it should accelerate things. We do have utility work remaining. Um, so the section north of Seventh will, you know, continue to be under that utility conversion phase. Mm -hmm. throughout the length of the project. So, and where are we on the, the, the railroad trussle? So, that's phase three. Okay. Uh, the, the green. Mm -hmm. uh, BK, our consultants, submitted 100% uh, plans to the railroad company, the final component of the 100% plans, I believe, May late 20th. May, May 20th. Mm -hmm. And so, we are waiting on their feedback. You know, that was the, I heard that the last time we they talked, we're waiting on the feedback. Um, is there any timeline for feedback? Well, we have been checking in with them yeah. periodically. Uh, we are, we have a timeline of 60 days that we're expecting to receive comments. That's a projection that's, that we're working off of. Well, in the next 60 days, I, I, I don't, if it's all right with the committee, I'd like to make sure that we have some updates on that. Absolutely. Can, you, can you back up to the Brian? To the, so, it's a lot that's got to happen from yeah, September that, too. That's right. That's kind of the elephant in the living room, right? Now. Right. None of this is any good until that. Without that. That's right. right. Well, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I, okay. I, I, I respect <laughs> your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 utilities, there's 
there's, there's <laughs> but I mean, from the standpoint of a mere driver. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't get from one place to another. Yeah, you can't. And, and Mayor Maddox can be a, 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 a this, this constituent be, for this thing I can't do. This complete, this will be open traffic. I, I know, you that's why we're trying to pin down. Like, what, I, what do we think yeah. the when it com is complete? Yeah. Is it a month, a year, five? Right. What? You talking about the, the... Put us a marking round out of the deck. The, the, like the going from... Go to, to go to bids, the last bid schedule, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, would be uh, October, November to go to bids. Right. Um, yes, sir. I'm sorry. The railroads, first of all, the railroads start you, you don't just, you know, get to the end and the railroads say no. I don't know how that myth got out there. They let you start a process, and in that process, you submit plans, 25% mm -hmm. plans for it, 40%, whatever it may be. So you go through each marker. And Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but they have one engineer for the whole Southeast. And so it takes time to get responses and you go through each phase. The good news is I think on both, the main and the spur, we're through those hurdles. We get the 100% back. If all, is, if all goes well, we'll be in bids. Now, there's always a chance they could say, we, we want to do X, and that's always a possibility that then restarts the clock. But you know, that's that's any project that involves the railroad, and especially this one, because that line has to stay active. Right. That line has to remain active and open and in use. So they're, they, as they should, they take a lot of time in reviewing that to make certain it's safe and done the right way. If, if that project gets bid in the fall, are we talking is it another year? Probably to get all that done, or is it less? Or do you two years duration for phase three. Phase three is two, two years. years. So, you, so you two can't. years of construction. Right. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Got to remember, yeah. you got to you got to keep it open. And that yeah. that slows it. The, you were just the trellis, trestle, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. trestle. Yeah. But it, the good news is, Not vehicle good. traffic should be open as in some parts of it as well at times. So mm -hmm. you'll get functionality out of it. That you could go all the way through, at times or not. It's my understanding the last report I got is at times. Now, again, that just depends upon which stage of construction they're at. Okay. Those two in phase three, talk, give us give us some information on them. Those, yes, sir. Oh, the... No, back, back to the green. Yeah, the spur roads. Yeah, this is... We've, we've got this scoping as the southern spur road, and this is known as the northern spur road. They're just scoped out spur roads and future access to the west. And Tom, are we are we done on the right of way and where phase three is? Except for there's a small part of the two along the spur road. They just stop. Okay. Thank Questions? you. No sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you in the next 60 days. That's good. Item number six, <clears throat> authorization for the Office of Community and Neighborhood Services to make budget and program amendments to the State of Alabama 2020 Plan CARES Act and to advertise amendments for citizen comments. You're, you're a guest on our committee. I am. Yeah. Yeah. We are honored to have you. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you. These are the next few items. <laughs> um, if you remember, uh, we actually received seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the actual state of Alabama for COVID, um, COVID funding. Um, we had allocated six hundred and seventy-five thousand to the renovations to Stillman Heights Elementary, the hub. Do we have um, since re recaptured those funds due to the strict regulations that TCS, the Tuscaloosa City Schools, they have? They want to move forward with the project and don't want to use federal funding. Um, do, if you know with federal funding, there are a lot of boxes that we have to check off before we do anything. And so we're prolonging the project. That is not to say the project the project will happen. The renovation is still will be going on with their money. Um, our proposal here today is to make budget and program changes to this and partner, partner with the Tuscaloosa Fire and Rescue for acquisition of equipment for that 675 k to continue How can to, we, we can do that? Yes, to prevent, long as it's to prevent, prepare for, and respond to COVID. As long as it's what? To prevent, prepare for, and respond to COVID. Prevent to, to, to prepare, prepare for. Prepare for and respond to COVID. COVID. So in this situation, we're really responding 
to COVID now. Mm -hmm. um, and so and that's where we are right now. And so I have um, Chief here to explain some of the equipment that actually could be used for responding to COVID. I'm thrilled, but how does this work? Mm. It's well, in our justifications, we have to show how it actually will help us prepare, prevent, prepare for, and respond to not only COVID, but other emerging diseases that are out there that we could face in the future. Uh, some of the items we're looking at different things, not only to protect our personnel uh, from exposure, but also from secondary exposure to civilians or citizens. Uh, things such as uh, different types of PPE, uh, ruggedized uh, tablets that allow us to be able to decontaminate them between you know, me handing it to you to sign your either refusal or your acceptance of a patient in a hospital, being able to decontaminate that so it's not trans crossed uh, secondary exposure, excuse me. Uh, other things we're looking at, some of the EMS prevention equipment. Uh, we're looking at some vehicles uh, to be utilized not only by our logistics division and delivering supplies, but also our training division. Uh, in doing a lot of the training. A lot of the training that they do is remote sometimes, uh, especially uh, when we were dealing with COVID, when, in the high, when we had high numbers. Uh, we did not want to bring large groups together, so our training division actually had to go out and hit individual companies and stations and things. Uh, when we did mass vaccination centers, they came out, did just-in-time training, and things of that nature. And we, have, we also have our CV2 money um, we also have the acquisition of two life-saving equipment units in the Tuscaloosa Fire Rescue. Good. I don't have, I don't have, I'm going to do it. Second. Move to second. And all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Motion carries. And the next item is to go to the item we discussed before. We two more. Yes. Two more. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Special guest. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, this is actually authorizing the execution of a memorandum of understanding with the Tuscaloosa Fire and Rescue Department for the purpose of that equipment and to carry out that project. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So moved. Second. Move to second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number eight. Last Resolution aye. to authorize the mayor to execute a special municipal agency funding contract with temporary emergency services. Mm -hmm. I believe it's Summer Jobs Program, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, last month we issued an RFQ for um, our Summer Jobs Program. Mm -hmm. We received three proposals and they were graded by our evaluation team mm -hmm. and uh, selected uh, agency with temporary emergency services and the contract is not to exceed 100K. So and the contract is with TES to administer, to administer the summer hiring? Is yes, that what it is? to administer mm -hmm. the program. I think they um and they sorry, go ahead. I think they um sent they didn't get the grant last year. Right. They had a great proposal. Um and I can only imagine the information that was in their packet this time was yeah. awesome. And so I, I I would ask this committee to support it. I will say this when they did not get the um contract last year, they did do an in house with twelve mm -hmm. um twelve you. They did. And they did an amazing job. And that's actually in their contract. And I will say that they are actually putting twelve thousand dollars of their own funding along with the hundred k. Um, how how many do we think? I'm, I'm how, how many how many think we how many kids do we hire for hundred grand? Seven. 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 And how yeah, how how, how does where do they become yeah. aware of this and go to do it? That is up to the curriculum of the chosen agency. They have all that laid out. I can probably be okay. more than happy to send hard. I'm fine. You. Yeah. Motion. Motion. I mean, second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Perry. Kimberly gets to be on stage next. Kimberly. Um, <laughs> item number nine is authorization to enter into minor public works contract with Southern Heating and Cooling for installation of a three ton air conditioning unit at the Montgomery Highway Booster Pump Station. Total is 61.85. Welcome, Kimberly. Yeah. So this is just a replacement of the existing unit that's out there, and this is to keep the, um, the controls and stuff inside the pump station cool. Um, so we're paying for this out of our operations budget for the funding that was there, and we did get quotes on this, and that's how the two quotes were so Southern Heating and Cooling. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. And all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 10 is authorization to enter into minor public works contract with DSL to install 
wiring, conduit, and programming for the primary uh, clarifier scum pumps three through five. Total $48,736. Kimberly. So ESL has done a lot of our wiring out there with the conduit and installation, so they're very familiar with what we do and don't have underground out, out at Fletcher. And so this is basic, they did um, the wiring, they did the same thing for pumps one and two, and so this is for the three, three, five, now that we're at that phase where we can do it. And so the $48,736 is budgeted in our operations budget. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 11 is authorization to enter into minor public works contract with Shepherd Services for pump two, uh, station, lift station two repair, $13,035.24. Kimberly. It's basically what it says right there. It's just to repair one of the pumps in the station. Um, this is still a minor repair to uh, one of the existing pumps, and we do have two new pumps that are ordered and are expected to be delivered in July. But so this is with Shepherd Services, which is who typically works on this kind of pump for us, and this is also budgeted in our operations budget. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Moved and second, and all aye. in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 12 is approval. Said those magic words. To, to enter operational budget. Into mm -hmm. minor public works contract with paints on us plus painting at City Hall, <laughs> totaling $10,100. Mr. Turner, good, good afternoon. afternoon. So these next three contracts we have are minor public works contracts for some aesthetic upgrades here at City Hall. And what we've done is went and got three quotes on each one, worked with Ms. Drake out of LaPerry's office to try to utilize and uh, take advantage of the Tuscaloosa Fields program, uh, some needed work we needed to do. So the first one is a minor public works contract with paints on us plus for painting at City Hall. What this will do is not to exceed $10,100 so paints on us plus will come handle the painting. We're going to provide the, furnish the paint and the primer. So this will be a contract with them to handle this work. Good to see us using that Tuscaloosa Builds program. So yeah. glad to do that. So, yeah. it is. So good, good way to do it. And it is this, how oh, is this? is budgeted program? out of our facility mm -hmm. renewal. Second. Moved and second and all in favor say aye. 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 Item number 13 is approval to enter into minor public works contract with McWilliams repair for carpentry work at City Hall, totaling $12,000. Same thing. We got some minor carpentry work, miscellaneous carpentry work to do to update and refresh the facility. We did the same thing here. Multiple contractors chose McWilliams repair for the carpentry work. Mm -hmm. We're going to furnish the materials. They'll furnish the labor tools and equipment. Same thing that Williams repairs the Tuscaloosa Bills participant, and this is budgeted in facility rental account. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All aye. in favor say aye. 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 Item number 14 is approval to enter a minor public works contract with crimson carpet and flooring to install new flooring at City Hall, totaling 6453 This is Kevin. similar. This will be flooring, and we did the same thing. Uh, asked for multiple quotes. We only got a, one quote back from Crimson Park and Flooring on this one, so we're recommending to go with them. Again, budgeted in the facility renewal account. Sounds good. Do I hear a motion to, so, so move. to approve? Moved. Right. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, lastly, on the agenda today, um, I want us to have a discussion. We talked about this a few weeks ago about just permit work within the city, within the public right of way. I, I would like to say a couple things. I, this is very important to all of our constituents I know mm -hmm. across the city. Um, I would just like to say as a, as a councilman, I've been here one year and I have gotten more complaints about <coughs> problems in the public right of way with these utility permits than anything that I have received since I've been on the council. So currently right now we have a company that is doing right away work right now and we've hit uh, water mains, there's been electrical problems, we've hit sprinkler systems. I mean it has been just, I hate to say, a nightmare and it's not a it's not a good look for the company even though I understand they're hiring other contractors but it's a it, it is an issue I think all across the city and one thing that I had asked um, the, the Tyler and I'm, I'm so glad that Chris is here, I see him in the corner over there, um, is I, as a council person, and I'm, I'm, I never try to speak for anybody else, but I think everyone would agree with what I'm fixing to say. I would like to have a, a system where we see as a council 
This is who these people are. These are when they're, this is the times they're coming to our neighborhoods. You know, if, if we're giving somebody a franchise agreement, why are we doing it? Who are they? And and being able to adequately communicate to to our constituents. And then also, if there are problems, mm -hmm. here's the steps that you need to take to help remedy that, which your council person is part of it, but really 311. And there needs to be a contact with the uh, with the contractor or the subs. And, and I think most of these problems have, have been with the subcontractors. So with that, I, I think Tyler's going to speak a little bit to that. And then is Chris going to just join in as needed? Or has he got a little talk he's good at? He might have a spiel worked up. Um, <laughs> we wanted him here so he can speak to any legal Perfect. issues as far as the franchise agreement, um, specifically what may be in the agreements that we have or what we may or may not be able to include in the agreements when we're doing a new one. Um, I, know, I think it was mentioned that there are some state restrictions on what can actually be in those agreements. Um, so that's specifically why I wanted him here. As far as this process, so as you said, we have certain contract for certain companies that can work within our right of way. Um, they're required, if they want to put utilities in our right of way, they have to get a franchise agreement with us. That agreement essentially says, we agree you're putting this in there under these conditions. Um, you're going to follow these steps. You know, during design, during construction, afterwards, if we need to relocate anything, they're required to relocate it for a proof improvements project. And it kind of lays out the basic um, guidelines and rules for what and, that is. And Tyler, if somebody mm -hmm. wants to come and, and apply for a franchise agreement, how does that work? How are they chosen? Can anybody... I guess in the country can come in here and want to do business in Tuscaloosa, right? That's correct. So, we, don't, we don't choose which people come into town to work, they essentially come to us and say, hey, we think we have a market here, we, don't, we want to install our facilities, what do we need to do? And that's when I send them to Chris and say, hey, you need a franchise agreement, you know, work it out with legal when you're done, come back to me with some plans. And when they do that, they sign a contract with us and then we <clears throat> stipulate for them, these are the, the rules that you're supposed to follow if you do this, right? That's correct. And a lot of those are pretty basic, like, you know, when they go to do construction, they have to call in 811 and locate the utilities. That's standard. It's just um, in writing. It's They have to repair any damage that they make, um, and that's to landscaping, that's to sprinkler systems, who's roadways. The, who's station. the arbiter of that restoration? Um, I'm... Usually, if you come dig up my yard happening. and crack my driveway, yeah, and you leave and say it's we fixed it, and I say it's not like it was, what happens? At that point, we get into a discussion, see if we can figure out you know, what was there before. Is the existing or was the existing condition at least equal quality to where it was afterwards? Typically, and as much of a headache as I know you've been dealing with, typically. A lot of them do restore it back to what it was before. They're pretty good about that. Um, Chris does have some escalation, escalation procedures in the franchise agreement if we were need to need to use them. And he can speak to what those are. Um, so far, I've not really had to get into any <laughs> formal legal consequences, thankfully. <laughs> um, but I guess it's. But, but if. I think part of the problem. Too, y'all, y'all probably heard me say this a million times to your sick of hearing it. Harry Lee used to always say that I served with on the school board that I love dearly. That communication at its best is bad. Okay, mm -hmm. I think right. all of this could be avoided if we were communicating better with the constituents in everybody's district. Because I've been told, and Chris, I want you to answer this: that they're supposed to communicate with the homeowners. They're supposed to notify them, this is the date we're going to be there, this is the work that we're going to do, blah, 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 along the, that line. The same and the same and again, I don't want to say people have selective memory. That's the wrong way to put it. But I can tell you, every person that I've ever talked to about this knew nothing about this, that no one had communicated. So I don't know. There is a broken process in that to start yes. with. You're, you're correct. So, so specifically, so where's the teeth? We when they when I'm going so after them. When Ceasefire first started the installation in District mm -hmm. Three, because right now they're primarily up there. Um, we had asked them, "Hey, we want you to communicate with the neighborhoods because it's it's going to you know affect 
essentially everybody in District 40. We wanted them to know and be aware. And they agreed, they had no issues with it. Um, to my knowledge, I thought that was happening. When I met with them on Friday afternoon, they actually informed me, they had just found out that it was not happening in the way it was supposed to. Essentially what was going on was they were their marketing team was supposed to send two notifications before construction. It was supposed to be a notification that service is coming and more kind of a marketing notification and then one when construction was actually gonna start, the expected time frames, people to contact if they have issues. Um, essentially that communication up front. Their marketing team apparently didn't get the message that that's what they were supposed to be doing. So none of the communicate, none of the construction notifications had been. Going so do in. we yank their permit if they're not doing? Or so you, I mean, they've admitted to you they're not doing their job. So what am I supposed to tell the other neighborhoods that this group of wonderful people are headed to? Yeah. How, how to prepare for this and, and so, when to prepare for this? Yeah. So what we worked out with them. Number one, they're trying to get. They're going to get that resolved. And, they're going to work with their. And by the way, they're team. they're headed to some neighborhoods. That it's not going to be good. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's already bad, but they're headed to some neighborhoods that that some of these folks I, I jokingly say will is coming up next. Well, well, because Lee Garrison is sitting here, I can joke about this. They they will have the pitchforks. <laughs> they will have the pitchforks coming after their councilman. Well, oh, which I or, again they might be marching down here too. I don't know. But or that's what, but or what happens when you you come into a neighborhood and people don't know to contact anyone, or they just think that it's the city doing it, like they in, did. In, for instance, yeah. in my communities. So how do we inform our communities who just don't know who, yeah. at all? It's a, it's so a big issue. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So to, sorry. to resolve yeah. the issues that you're having, on the short term, and, and this will stay in place, Ceasefire has agreed to send me notification two weeks before they'll be there with, wow. with that information, when they're going to be there, the anticipated duration of construction and contacts that you know, people can get in touch with if they have issues. I will forward that on to you so you can pass it out to HOAs, whoever you may need to do. Um, Darren Smith, is their, their new supervisor for the area, has started getting in touch with the HOA presidents to kind of initiate that communication. That's, he's probably only done a couple so far. Is he out of Birmingham? Um, I think he said he lived maybe in Jasper area. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so they, that, they that totally started as well. And the mark, they're working with their marketing team to get the mailers actually fixed, send out what's supposed to be sent out. Because not everybody in the area is going to have Facebook. Not everybody's going to use email. They may not get the notification if you post it on the Facebook page. Um, so they're trying to hit those multiple methods so everybody at least has some sort of an idea of what's well, going to happen. I know that one well, and they actually just bombed my neighborhood. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. And Chris is, thank goodness, um, it's still not it, all, all right, mm -hmm. but if it wasn't for Chris, um, they came back and, and did it. Was it fire in the neighborhood? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So see. So this is part of the confusion too. We have spire and we have ceasefire. And they had this is a gas. Yeah, spire is gas. Ceasefire is telecommunications. I mean, they they had their the subcontractors. I mean, I might as well have been doing the work. That would have been really bad because it, they couldn't dig a hole or nothing. And spire is difficult because Alabama Power and Spire actually are not required to get permits by their franchise agreement. They have wow. special. So agreement. I actually have yeah, no idea agreement. what work they're doing anywhere when they're doing it um normally yeah. at the time it was a road that we paved yeah yeah oh yeah that's what happened that's what happened we finally got and then, 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 then you the 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 and then they you said something tyler that must struck have a sewer head. line yeah uh, somehow after mr crow calls his meeting they discover that they they did not notify people appropriately um are there any penalties within our agreement with them for that? Or is there any sort of, you know, any sort of, of, of dial back we can take? Because it is, constituents have always had issues with this, and rightly so. And we, I understand their frustration. So, is there is there anything we can do? And that, that may be a Mr. England that. question. That primarily is through the permitting process. Um, they can give us. 
can destroy yards, trespass, and just trample over people's personal property rights. We have the ability to start withholding permits because the, the franchise specifically requires an official city to get permission to do so. Mm -hmm. So when you start going down this process, <coughs> you start telling them permits on the future projects are going to be delayed or denied until you start repairing issues with your earlier uh, process. Are there their permits approved, Mr. England? I mean, how, like in this case, are they approved citywide, or do they get approval neighborhood by neighborhood or street by street? How does that work? Every I mean, well, generally area by area. That might be individual neighborhoods. That might be a couple neighborhoods. That might be. I had one that was a five mile ring around North Tuscaloosa. Um, well, it just kind of depends on what what work they're looking to do. And Tyler's, Tyler's group has has done a good job. I'm sorry, Mr. Crow. Yeah, they have. Um, the, there were some initial issues that we had, specifically when the sea fire started coming out. And they're, and they're not the only ones that have been guilty of this. Nobody has a franchise that hadn't messed something up. But they're the ones that are doing a ton of work right now. Um, but they, they were doing things that, that, quite frankly, were kind of silly and putting some of their pool boxes, you know, instead of putting it on the property line where they're burying cable, well, they're putting, you know, posts in the front of people's yards and, and Tyler's crew was able to really put a stop to that and I think get some things relocated it's, is it over the last couple of weeks specifically Tyler has made <coughs> projects and putting some guardrails in place so they'll have to start communicating with people and also communicating with us before they start I guess the lack of a better term invading people's neighborhoods this you know uh, it's not just a citywide problem it's a, it's a countywide problem is there a way we could design this to give council members more notification of what is happening and also feedback on things that are not going right? I mean, I've, I've, I've sat in their shoes and know that when these issues began and there's, you feel powerless to hold anyone accountable, do y'all have any suggestions in that regard so that if, you know, I'm not saying to do this, but before they come to the towns of North River or they come to high grove if, if mr crow is not satisfied with the work that they've done at stillwater he can say no you know, until we get these issues solved i'm going to request that we hold withhold a permit until these issues are solved i don't know does that make sense i mean yeah. something that forces them yeah. to do people right in a very appropriate timetable mm -hmm. um, and i get tyler to put together very recently where they're notifying him so he can so notify the council. But also, um, if it gets to the point where it needs to be escalated and they're going to go a little bit higher, it's something that I can. Chris, when, uh, when I know we're put a little pressure. But, yes. but when, when we sign these yes, agreements, if we, I mean, I don't know what I mean, the communication part of it, if we can demand of them that part of the agreement is to do what. Tyler's doing. I think if we just do the communication part of it, where we know where they're going, what they're doing, and then hey, if you don't leave the neighborhood like you found it, or there's a problem here you haven't addressed, we're not going to allow you to move on to another neighborhood until you've met our standard of whatever that is legally that these people have to do. Because I, I mean, I, I know when I first got on the council, and I wouldn't have a discussion with, with Tyler, but just. You know, you've been y'all been great, responsible about all the stuff. The city has done, I think, what we could in this situation. You know, even Friday night, when I had a guy call me, he had people out of town. They had no water. They had nothing, and I feel helpless as a councilman. And thank goodness we've got a staff, right, that I could call and say or text somebody and say, y'all, what do we do with this, right? I mean, that's. Mm -hmm. We've got to be able to get their attention in some way, and, and again, I go back to the communication part. You know, I I'm finding out about this when I get pictures of water mains and and yards. You know, making a new fountain in the neighborhood, right? I mean, it's I, I think that's part of it. If there's anyone who can hold their feet to the fire, I think that's going to make it a lot better. I think in the future we can probably be a little bit more clear in our franchise agreements about the power we reserve. But the, our current franchise agreement lays a good foundation for us to be able to um, stop them if it becomes necessary. I mean, I'll just say the first sentence in that in our franchise agreement for installation of facilities says ceasefire shall not ins install any new facilities in any public right of way without having received a permit from the city. So 
So we have the ability, if they get out of control or they start doing things, to stop the process. Now, but as an aside though, um, it's a jarring experience to walk outside and see people walking in and out of the, out of the yard. Is most people don't understand that there's a built-in right of way for, for her, her easement there for utilities. Yeah. On so, everybody's property. On everybody. Because I've had that discussion with a lot of homeowners well, too. So it's I think it's also part of their responsibility when they begin to explain to them, that's right. explain to anybody that's asked that you know we have a right to be here, but at the same time we cannot go beyond that. It, and also the other problem that we were having is that every neighborhood that they're going into they are setting up a different standard of notice for different neighborhoods. Because like you would go to one neighborhood and you have a, this little, a kiosk set up in front of it and, and they were selling the product as they were building it. But you go to another and they wouldn't send a letter, they wouldn't contact any, any of the people in the neighborhood and they wouldn't find out what was going on until somebody had appeared in front of their house and they get woken, awakened in the morning with somebody digging in their yard. So this process now is sort of normalizing the way we communicate so we start getting a little bit more notice so we can stop some of those jarring experiences. It would also be helpful, and I know we've got a lot of other things to do. We can continue this conversation, but it would be helpful, Tyler, to have if there, you know, some type of cheat sheet that says this is, you know, the process, this is what happens if you've got a problem, this is what, you know, the city is pledging to do this, that if, you know, if they don't do this, we you know, we control part of this permit process. I think people just want to see that there's some accountability in this because I, I think most everybody that's called me, A, doesn't understand the public right of way on their property, but secondly, they're tearing everything up in the neighborhood and, and, and people don't want, you know, they don't want this. You know, and, and I think the bad part for the company that they need to get in gear is they're getting a black eye. No one's going to sub subscribe for services with them with based on their experience. And that means they're spending a lot of money for nothing, well, in my I, opinion. And but, I'll, I'll, maybe we need to come back with some more ideas. But one of the things sitting here listening to this discussion a few weeks ago when we were you know, talking about my neighborhood, I came home and there's all these painted lines in my front yard. I went out there and took pictures because I know when they come through and dig it up, Inevitably, they're going to put something back that's not going to be what was there, and then I'm going to have to go talk to somebody about making it happen, and I'm going to need pictures to show them what it was like before. But I know that because I deal with it. You know, I'm, I'm in government, right? I, I get an idea of it. Most people have no, have no clue. Right. Exactly right. Right. If there was some way we could include something or require them to include something, your rights as a homeowner. Yeah, sure. I think would be good too. Um, I don't know how you do that, Mr. Crow. It sounds simple, but I know it's much more complex. But require them to put a, a your bill of rights, so to speak, to to you know, yeah, they can come through here and do this, but they owe it, owe it to you to return it to the state it was in. And as council people, if we just have that to be able to tell everybody, this these are the steps that you take because. If they're not in your neighborhood, they're coming to one near you soon. And the other council districts, they, they are on their way. I just don't know when. And, and, and you know, and that's... You're right. and, and use every uh, social media, radio, and public service announcements and, to get and, those words out. And to your point, I would also say this is some city of Tuscaloosa could put out there, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. That in, in part of our postings that blank is coming to these neighborhoods or just give right. people a heads up where people see mm -hmm. that this is coming. I mean, I think it will make all of our lives I'll easier. I'll talk with Richard about yeah. how we can maybe coordinate better information. You can also go in and in draw it. You know, can geofence a certain area oh, no, 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 and put, in put something out there. Right. So yes, sir. Sure that we don't adopt the responsibility that the contractor's sole responsibility. Yeah. Um, and I think we probably need to be more specific in our notice requirements. Right. Um, and also, like you said, homeowners' rights in terms of yeah. who you notify, how you notify them, and what you're doing in the event that somebody goes through the yard, destroys it, and then sets prepares to do their standards for the how, how long would it take, Mr. England, you and Tyler, to come up with recommendations? Uh, uh, no, we've been Trust me, this has been a long time. <laughs> um, but I, in, in the meantime, we may be able to actually start looking at our permitting process to, to, to see what additional requirements we can place on the 
the contract in terms of you know noticing the reparation. Yeah. So, um, I think that's more of a media response. I do you want to say as difficult this has been for a lot of the neighborhoods during construction? From what I have observed after construction, after they're done, after they've left, overall I haven't seen that it has been very in left in very good condition. As difficult as it is during. I, I will agree with you that, that I have not gotten many complaints about the restoration process. Yeah. The, the, the complaints have been on the front end. It's not been that they haven't left things the way they should. But I appreciate everything you do, and thank you for, for coming today. And, Chris, thank you for, for being here. And if you all will work up something just for more communication to us, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. It's, as I said, it's it's coming to a it's neighborhood a, near you. That's right. It, it, it's coming. It's horrible, I'm telling you. <laughs> I know all they, of it. I'm always going to say something, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. Any other uh, business to be brought before our committee? Nothing. If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Or so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Our next uh, public hey, project. Uh, finance at four. Next Tuesday, June finance 14th. at four.